Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our wonderful Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for us to ponder this morning is the gospel reading we heard a few moments ago, but especially verse 46, the final verse of this text. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Thus declares the Word of God. One of the popular beliefs in uh, religious thinking here in the United States today is what is called universalism. This is the idea that there is no such place as hell and that ultimately everyone just automatically winds up in heaven. This is the notion that it doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe anything you want. Just be sincere in your beliefs. And this view tends to teach that all religions are equally good because we're all going to the same place anyway. Now, this is exactly how a lot of people feel today. And because they feel that way, they don't really have to stop and think about their own relationship with God. And because many people within the Christian church of today also feel this way, they feel no urge to try and tell other people about Jesus Christ and the cross. Many are convinced we're all going to the same place anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I share the faith. But even though many may feel this is the truth, that doesn't make it right. In fact, it's just plain wrong. First of all, they are wrong about universalism because it does matter what you believe in. People can be very sincere and yet still totally wrong. Once a house caught on fire, quickly the fire department responded and started to put out the blaze. However, the woman of the house could not be comforted and finally was able to blurt out what was wrong. My, my baby daughter is still in there. Well, one of the firemen immediately rushed into the house, stumbled through the smoke until he found the daughter's room, reached into the crib and grabbed the still form he found lying there. He then rushed out of the house and out onto the sidewalk just as the roof of the house collapsed and all was thought to be well until the mother screamed that's not my baby it's her doll now I want you to know this fireman did everything he could he did the best possible job he could have done he was as sincere and dedicated as anyone could be yet he'd also been wrong he thought he grabbed the baby when he grabbed a doll instead. You see, sincerity alone was not enough to save. And sincerity alone will never be enough to save. For it's not just a matter of being sincere. It's a matter of believing the truth, of knowing the truth. You must believe the right thing. And that's certainly true when it comes to eternity. It's not enough to be sincere about your beliefs. You've got to believe the right thing, the truth, the truth of God. And this, a second reason why this idea of universalism is all just plain wrong is because obviously there is a hell. When you look at the words of Jesus, the service, our text for today, it's perfectly clear that there is a hell. Jesus says then, when people die, some will go to heaven and some will go to hell. He says we're not all going to the same place. He says some will go to eternal punishment, verse 46, and some will go to eternal life. Unfortunately, my friends, hell is very real, and unfortunately, some will spend eternity there. And what a terrible fate that is indeed. I mean, look at our text. Hell is described in our text as a place of eternal fire and eternal punishment. And elsewhere in Scripture, hell is described as a place of torment and agony, a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, as a place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Hell is so terrible that then when the rich man was condemned there, he immediately begged Jesus, I have five brothers, warn them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Unfortunately, my friends, hell is a real place, and it is terrible. And it's no place for any human to ever be. And yet, many will spend eternity there. So, so who's going to go to heaven and who's going to go to hell? Now, usually we like to pretend 
that all us pretty good people are certainly going to heaven. I mean, after all, we're not like those evil people out there, those really terrible sinners out there. We like to think that all of us pretty good people certainly deserve heaven. And we'll say stuff like, if anyone deserves heaven, he does. If anyone deserves heaven, she does. That's what we like to pretend. However, God's Word clearly tells us that none of us deserve heaven, that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We like to pretend that being pretty good is good enough, but in His Word, God tells us that His standard is absolute holiness, righteousness, and perfection. If we're going to earn our way into heaven, God says we must be absolutely holy, righteous, and perfect. And if we fall into sin even just once, we totally destroy any chances we have of earning heaven for ourselves. Then, of course, we need to remember also that sin does not just include the terrible things we seem to want to do to each other. Sin also includes all the good things that God wants us to do for each other that so very often we just absolutely fail to do. Things like feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, visiting the lonely, and in general, just meeting each other's needs. In our text, we see that sins of omission, as we call them, are also part of our sin problem. We are sinning when we neglect those in need around us. And the Scriptures tell us if we only sin once, whether sin of commission or sin of omission, our chances of deserving salvation are already gone. Now, most of us are a little bit blind when it comes to noticing our own sin, but I don't think any of us are so blind to our own reality that we would honestly claim that we've never had a problem with sin ever, ever in our lives. All of us can think of some of the horrible things we did that hurt other people and some of the times we passed by someone in need rather than getting involved. So the truth becomes obvious. We don't deserve heaven. In fact, we deserve just the opposite. But, and that's where the good news comes in. The good news is that God continues to love us. And he wants us to spend eternity with him in heaven in spite of all our sin. And of course, that's exactly why Jesus was sent into our world. Jesus came into this world to go through death and hell for us as our substitute so that our penalties could be paid for by someone else and we could escape the fate that we truly deserve. Christ gave up his life for us on the cross so that we could have life, real life, abundant life, life that never ends, life with God. Jesus died so that we could live. Once during World War II, a prisoner escaped from cell block 14 of a Nazi prisoner of war camp. Because of this, all the other prisoners being held in that cell block were ordered to stand at attention while 10 of the prisoners were chosen to be starved to death as a punishment for the fact that no one notified the guards of the man's intentions. Well, among those chosen to be starved to death was a man called Francis Gazau Nisiak. When he was selected, he fell to his knees and began to sob and said, my poor wife and children, what will become of them? Well, upon hearing this, another prisoner immediately stepped forward and asked to take the place of Francis. Now, the commander just stared at this man for a second in unbelief that anyone would volunteer to die as a substitute for someone else. But then eventually he asked, well, who are you? And the man replied, I am a Catholic priest. I have no wife or children. Well, this man's wish was granted, and the Catholic priest was starved to death instead of this man, Francis, who had that wife and children. This Catholic priest then was put to death so that the other man could live. And that, my friends, is exactly what Jesus did for us. He volunteered to take our place. He volunteered to receive our punishment. He volunteered to die our death for us. He stepped forward and asked to be put to death on the cross in our place so that we could live, so that we could avoid death. He died our death for us. 
And you see, that's why we now have the chance to spend eternity in heaven instead of hell. The scriptures tell us plainly that all who look to Jesus Christ in faith will receive forgiveness in eternal life. Just listen to a few of the many promises God makes to us in this regard. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. The Bible makes it abundantly clear then that eternal life in heaven is guaranteed to all who look to Jesus Christ in faith, to all who believe that when Jesus died on his cross, he did so for all of us, for our sins. The Bible makes it clear that even though we don't deserve heaven at all, God gives it to us freely out of his love through his Son by faith alone. And we certainly can see all this in our text. For as the sheep are received into heaven... Christ specifically praises them for the good works which flowed from their faith. Now you must keep in mind, it wasn't the good works that saved them. It was the faith in their heart which produced those good works. For whenever we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are changed, transformed, so that we become more and more and more like him. Faith inevitably then leads us to begin to care for other people. And good works are the evidence of the faith that lives inside, of faith in Jesus Christ. So that brings us to the big question. Which are you, sheep or goat? When you die, will you go to heaven or to eternal punishment? Think about it, because hell is real. And unfortunately, many will spend eternity there. Will you? Not if you're looking to Jesus Christ in faith, you won't. Not if you truly believe that Jesus Christ paid for your sin in full through his innocent suffering and death on the cross. Not if you are personally basing your hope of obtaining heaven on what Jesus Christ did for us. However, I do want you to remember that it's not enough just to be a church member. There are plenty of so-called good church members whose destiny is still hell. It's not enough just to have your name on a church's membership list. Your name has to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which means you have to have faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And it's not enough to be a basically good person, to be a good neighbor and a good citizen. I want you to be a good neighbor and a good citizen, but that won't make up for our sin. According to our text, there'll be all kinds of good people who will be honestly surprised on the last day when Christ sentences them to eternal punishment because they did not have faith. Faith is what is essential. Faith in Jesus Christ. So are you ready? And what about your family and friends and, or, and relatives and neighbors and co-workers? Are all of them prepared for death? Will all of them receive eternal life in heaven at Christ's side? You see, you can't just automatically assume that everyone's going to heaven. You have to care enough about them to find out what they believe about Jesus. You can't just assume they're all going there. So you've got to talk to them about Christ. And if you have that conversation and you find out that they believe in Jesus just like you do, well, great, praise the Lord. But if they do not yet believe, then you must find a way to talk to them about Jesus so that the Holy Spirit can use your words, perhaps, to plant that spark of faith. You must tell them about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. You must tell them so that the Spirit can give them faith too and so that they can receive eternal life instead of eternal punishment. Don't fall into the trap of universalism and just start assuming that everyone's a Christian and everyone's going to heaven. Instead, make sure you talk to the people God has brought into your life and make sure that they know about Jesus. Eternal punishment or eternal life, which will it be for you? And what will it be for your family and friends and neighbors and co-workers? Well, look to Christ, my friends. For in him there is forgiveness for all our sins. In him there is salvation. In him is eternal life. So look to him in faith. Look to him and be saved. Look to him and know that eternal life is yours. Look to him and point everyone else to him as well so that they too 
can have life in his name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.